Hi! So with Tears of the Kingdom being out, a lot of my time and mental energy has been dedicated to that game and it's been getting me excited to cosplay another character from The Legend of Zelda. I have several characters from the Zelda franchise in my to cosplay list and I'm gonna finally work on one of them in this video. That character will be Medley from Wind Waker. I think she's adorable and I want to be bird. First thing I'm gonna make for this project is her dress. I have this pattern I used for my Nausicaa cosplay and I'll just be altering it a little bit but the shape is really similar to Medley's. And then I'll be adding green trim around the navy blue. I want to do a test run first with the trim and make sure it works and will still have some stretch to it when I'm wearing it. Yeah, if it's all working out, I'll move on to the actual dress. Anyways, let's get started. What I ended up doing for my trim was taking my two fabrics, putting them right side together, and then doing a zigzag stitch over the top of them, measuring how thick I wanted my trim to be. Then I folded over the excess green trim onto the wrong side, tucking in that raw edge and pinning it down and then sewing over the top of all of that. This ended up working well, still looking nice and neat, but also giving me that stretch I was wanting, so I went ahead and started working on the actual dress. The dress is pretty much done. The only thing I might do now is bring in the shoulders just a little bit. They feel a little bit wide, so I might bring that in. I also added this green on the collar, which doesn't really matter. It's gonna get covered up by a scarf anyways, but I thought it looked nice and I had the fabric to do it. I think I'm going to move on to her red scarf thing next. The pattern for Medley's red scarf is basically a big rectangle and then I'm going to cut a hole in it. It is shorter in the back so be somewhere like this and then if my head doesn't fit through that I'll add a slit in the back just to give me some more room for my noggin. Here I am just getting the length and width measurements for my scarf um, and then I cut it out on my red fabric and sewed those two pieces together. For the hole for my head, I just marked how wide I wanted it to be and cut a circle out leaving some notches that I would then fold in for the hem but uh, this hole ended up being big enough for my head so I did not need to add extra space with the slit in the back and yep and then I just folded everything in and sewed it all up. Decorating this thing was so satisfying. I had this leftover heat transfer vinyl from when I cosplayed Shira, and I just cut my designs out from this and ironed them on. I love this stuff. It's so easy and it looks so fancy. And this gold fabric for the trim I also had left over from my Shira cosplay. So I just added this the same way I did with the trim on the dress. And uh, yeah, uh, yay for using up things that were just extras sitting in my fabric stash. This turned out 
so cute. I am so happy with the outcome. I know it's like a really simple pattern, but the gold tea tit details the gold details make me feel so fancy and cute now that this is done though the last few things to sew are her white scarf and then her boot covers which i don't love making boot covers so i'm kind of holding those off for the last thing to sew <laughs> i can't get over the shininess Ooh, so pretty so pretty for Medley's white scarf, I just followed a YouTube tutorial I found for an infinity scarf. I will add the link in my description. It was really good, um, but the only thing I did was make it shorter so it would sit higher up on my neck. To make Medley's button that she has on her scarf, I took some polymer clay and sculpted it over a pin that I already had. I originally tried adding the design on the button by using my sculpting tools, but that was just not working. It was very messy and just didn't look nice, so what I ended up doing was cutting out the design with some foam and then pressing it into the clay, and that ended up working a lot better. Polymer clay hardens in the oven, so after baking it for a little bit, I then sanded it and glued the button in place and uh, started painting it. I used two different golds, a brighter gold and then a darker gold for the inside of the design to help it stand out more. Hello and welcome to the floor. I will be making Medley's shoes today. For this, I will be using some plain slip-ons for a base shoe and then drafting a pattern to make some yellow boots over these. To make a pattern for the boots, I will be using this stuff, it's plastic wrap, and duct tape. So basically for this, you are going to, with your shoe on, take your plastic wrap and wrap your foot and leg up however tall you want your boot cover to be. Wow. Now that my leg's all wrapped up, I'm going to repeat the process, but with duct tape. I'm going to use a Sharpie and draw my pattern onto the duct tape. The last step is to very carefully cut along the pattern line I made myself and uh, free my leg from this duct tape prison. I have my pattern now. I can basically just trace this onto my yellow fabric, remembering to give myself some seam allowance. My only concern with these shoes is that my fabric is pretty thin and I'm worried about it sliding down my leg as I'm wearing it. Boot covers I made in the past here are my Rayla ones. The fabric was thicker and so it had more structure and held itself up okay. With these boots, I'm going to be constantly trying them on just to make sure that they're staying up on their own. I think if I make it pretty skin tight, it should be okay, but we'll see. Trying it on with what I have right now, it is slipping down my leg, so I think I'm going to add some elastic to the top and hopefully that'll prevent it from sliding down. It totally worked and is no longer 
slipping so I will go ahead and sew the right one and then attach them to the shoe. Before adding them to the shoe I took some acrylic paint mixed with fabric medium and painted on the lines that she has on her shoes. Now that her shoes are finished, I can move on to props and accessories as a treat. I think to start I will make her little headband she has first. It is the most simple and straightforward. Nice! Yeah! Her headband was really relaxing and chill to make. I just took some stretchy string, uh, enough to fit my head, and then added beads onto it, trying to match her headband the best I could. Now I'm gonna start working on her beak. This is the part of the costume where I really had no idea how to go about doing this when I decided I wanted to cosplay her. I'm thinking about using some craft foam and then gluing it with like eyelash glue or something directly onto my face. I really don't wanna have to use like a string to hold it up because it would be pretty visible against my skin. I'm going to make a pattern out of paper first, and if that's looking okay, then I'll transfer it onto the craft foam. My first attempt was a bit too big for my face, so I just trimmed some of the bottom off and ended up using that for my pattern. Here I am tracing the beak to make the pattern for the bottom. I'm using my glasses to hold it down right now, but here it is. From the front, it's giving Lord Voldemort, and from the side, it's giving Pearl from Steven Universe. But I think once I paint this, it will look more like a beak. I think it's kind of cute. Also, when I breathe in, well, I'm... <laughs> but yeah, I am going to prime this and then paint it. I don't think it's gonna uh, be a problem staying on my face. It's so light. It's foam. It's gonna be fine. I was so worried about this part of the costume and it ended up being not difficult at all. So that's a nice surprise. Then I primed the foam with some good old Plasti Dip and painted it with some acrylic paint. With the beat completed, I then moved on to constructing her harp. Making props for costumes is my favorite thing, and so I was very excited to make this, and uh, I definitely saved the best for last. The harp is made out of craft foam. I take my pattern and cut out several layers of it and uh, then I take all my layers and glue them together. The middle layer I added some wooden dowels in the center just because they were smaller and more narrower, more narrower, <laughs> and uh, I didn't want them to basically bend or I just wanted them to be more sturdy. It's like the bones of the prop. And then yeah, I took this glue that looks like boogers and glued them all together. The glue is um, rubber cement, by the way. <laughs> now that my base was constructed, I then took my pattern and started tracing on and cutting out all the details. Once all the details were cut out, I then took it 
to my Dremel to sand down everything. This makes it all look nice and smooth and uh, yeah, just rounds out a lot of those sharp corners. Here you can see the difference between before and after sanding and then Medley's harp had some smaller details and I decided to try out this Dremel head for the first time to get those details so I made sure I practiced beforehand and then once I felt like okay I get it uh, then I went in on those smaller details and uh, sanded those out. I added a channel so that my dowel would sit nicely in the harp and then I added some notches in the dowel so I could uh, rest my strings in them and then where the strings would come out from the bottom of the nose I cut some slits in it and then just slid the strings through them and glued them down so they would not slide out. With everything glued together, I could finally prime it with some wood glue mixed in with a little bit of water and I did, I think, like four or five layers of this on each side. <laughs> Here it is so far, it is now ready to be painted, which is the part I get most excited for. It really comes to life once you start slapping some color on this bad boy. So let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> I painted this by adding several coats of the base colors first, and then I go in and add some details and weathering and shading and all that fun stuff. I particularly love doing the wood grain on uh, I, I guess they're the handles, the top part there. <laughs> um, and yeah, just adding some swirls and stuff. It's very satisfying and uh, yeah, like I said, really starts coming to life. Just finishing up my paint job with a coat of satin varnish and then adding the last few details with the strings and then the little triangle things that go on top of them but yeah this was the last thing to be made for the costume so with this completed the costume is now ready for the reveal Here is the finished costume. I'm so happy with how this turned out. I think it's adorable. Yeah, I think it turned out better than I expected it to. My favorite bits are probably her red apron scarf thing and then the harp. And you may be wondering, does this thing actually play music? And yes, check this out. <laughs> Uh, it actually sounds like this. Wow. I think my least favorite part of this costume are the boot covers. They get the job done. They're okay. Nothing, nothing too crazy or fancy. Otherwise, it's been holding up pretty well as I've been wearing it. It is a particularly hot day. It's been 100 degrees outside and I thought, oh, I am going to sweat my beak off <laughs> and it has stayed on surprisingly and while I've been talking and stuff it also it's it's hanging in there it's it's doing a good job so there we go it's super cute and goofy and I love it <laughs> like I've said before I have been wanting to do a medley cosplay since I started cosplaying so I'm really excited to finally have this completed and uh yeah that's pretty much it 
for this video. I will see you in the next one and uh, bye. I just got out of the costume and uh, nice. <laughs> and now I'm all set to cosplay Dr. Finkelstein from The Nightmare Before Christmas. Sally. Nice! <laughs>